In today's video, we're going to be building the biggest iron farm I've ever built, and then go a bit over the top while decorating it. My name is Smolish Beans, and I've said I'm terrible at hardcore Minecraft, but we've reached day 600, so maybe I'm not too terrible at hardcore Minecraft. We've been in this world for 109 real life hours, and I've been trying to push myself to build some crazy stuff in this world. Speaking of pushing stuff, wanna push the subscribe button? No? Okay, cool. And what I normally don't show on camera is me sorting all my chests. It's painful. And yes, I could build an automated storage system, but I keep getting distracted and building stuff like these free windmills instead. Now, last time we built this lovely village here, which as you can see, there's lots of villagers just in the courtyard chilling. How are you doing, guys? So you're probably thinking, Joel, surely you're going to get a way to get emeralds so you can trade with these villagers this time. Of course I am not. As I said earlier, we're going to be building a mega iron farm which I guess we would be able to trade the iron for emeralds if we wanted to. But I don't want the iron for that. I want the iron for a beacon. And this iron farm we're going to build is massive. It's going to take up all this space here. And although I said it's massive, they're not that complicated to build. However, we do need a lot of materials. Such as cobblestone and walls and stairs and slabs, gates and glass and chests and blood. I mean beds. And ironically, one of the things we need is lots of iron. More, more than this. That's better. Now all we need is some lava. Yoink. And this is all you need to make this iron farm. And yes, I am following a tutorial. As if I designed it, it would be terrible. And I'll be following one by they six. Link in the description. So let's build it in a quick time lapse, which is probably going to take a long time. Now, yes, it took a long time, but this is the quickest stage of everything we're going to do for this farm. By firstly building the collection system and the killing chamber, and then building the actual farm that will shove the iron golems in themselves. But you'll notice lots of spots which are empty. What's going to go in those spots, Joel? Villagers and zombies. Ugh. Oh, hello. Uh -huh. Goodbye. Now I need four zombies. Pretty easy to get. Well, not really, but still. But the annoying thing is I need 24 villagers. 24. And I did have some villagers. How many have we got now? Oh, hello, fella. Four. Let's start by transporting these four over towards the farm. Off you go, fellas. All the way into here. And then I need a load of wool to make a load of beds. And finally, a load of wheat for bread to feed them. Ah, yes. Breed. Breed. And now we have to wait for them to multiply. Which is going to take a while, so we may as well work on the zombies. First, we need name tags. They're all going to have the same name. And that is Muppet Man 3003. The sun's about to set. Let's see how many zombies we can get. Surely this will go well. Will this be the first Muppet? Don't jump off. Oh, you were the chosen one. Oh, he's dead. Ah, this looks more like Muppet Man 3000. And free. There we go. Here we go again. Nice. Run, child. Yes. Don't know what to do during the day. Guess I'll farm more wheat. This is so boring. I've now farmed nearly 7,500 wheat. Should I be proud or depressed? The sun's setting again, isn't it, Iron Golem? I'm going to murder thousands of you. Oh, that was intimidating. Starting with you! I needed him to go so I could get the final zombie. Follow me, final Muppet Man 3000. And free. Oh. Ha ha ha! And with that, we have all four zombies in their cages. Still lots of villagers to go. Hey, Joel, look at all that wheat. No! How much wheat have I punched now? 9,300. And look, the ones behind me are growing again. Don't punch it this time, Joel. Don't punch it. Instead, let's look at our villagers. Look at them all. I think we nearly have the amount we need. If you're wondering where all my enchantment points just went, I just tried to make some better trousers and th they're not good. But we can work on that by adding mending to it. And speaking of mending, while we wait for these guys to grow up, let's go fix all of our stuff. Ah, the lovely sound of tools being fixed. Sorry if you can't hear me. Nice and fixed when I head back through here. Look at all my villagers. Yes, we, we have enough now. Let's start moving them. And I'm not going to show you this. Instead, I'm going to cut to my voice and you'll see how much fun I had. All right, that was generally not bad. I, I thought it'd be way worse, but we got all the villagers in, as you can see. And I'm happy to announce the farm is working. Oh, it's raining. Why does it always rain on me? But look, iron golems are spawning. This farm has the ability to spawn eight golems at once, meaning we get a lot of iron. And as you can already see, we've got a decent amount. 
But as you can also see, this structure is huge and also ugly, meaning we're going to have to cover it up. Also, these iron golems here will be ruining our spawn rate, so let's kill them quickly. Please don't kill me. Please don't end my series. I can't leave the world looking ugly. Good. As for the remaining villagers, they all lived happily ever after on a farm somewhere for the remaining of their days. Now for the outer building of this farm, I want to use a lot of stone. And to get a lot of stone, I need a beacon. And to get a beacon, I need a lot of iron blocks. So while we let this farm run for a bit, we're going to do some terraforming. As you may have noticed, the land around here is very ugly and we don't want our building to be floating. So time for a mega time lapse where we're going to place down a lot of grass. But the transformation will be worth it. Luckily, I had a full double chest worth of grass in my storage system so I didn't have to dig a load up. And we managed to get placing all of this relatively quickly. It took about six days in total. And most of it was just smoothing out the grass. But we also had a little cliff section here with some water. So how much iron do we have now? Looks like a decent amount. But that's not going to be a full beacon by any means. I guess while we wait, we can go actually get the beacon itself. Probably would be smart, wouldn't it? Oh, how have I only... What? Did I not have that before? So after the never, I went to kill some wither skeletons. I managed to get a skull pretty quickly. I think it was only about four wither skeletons or something. And then we had to kill a load more. But eventually, after about 10 minutes, we got all three. Pretty lucky. And now I have to kill the wither. I'm going to use my tried and tested method. That doesn't mean I'm still not absolutely terrified. Let's hope we don't die. Why is this so scary? I've done this so many times before. Three, two, one. Oh, easy. Half its health nearly gone. The tried and tested method never fails. Not even got withered yet. And there we go. Lovely jubbly. And now we can craft our beacon. La! And despite my lovely looking iron pom-poms, we're still nearly a stack short of iron blocks. I think I might AFK my creeper farm a bit and hope, yes, by the looks of it, that iron golems still spawn, which I think they do. I hate AFKing, but it needs to be done. Let's see how much iron we get in 30 minutes. Okay, I'm not sure if that was the best place to AFK, but let's see how much iron we got for 30 minutes. That's terrible. But hey, at least we've got loads of gunpowder. After some messing around, I think I've fixed the farm. It seems like there's more iron golems spawning now. I had to basically block off this and let these villagers sleep. It was a bit tricky, but we got there. We're only 10 blocks of iron away, so I'm just going to AFK a bit more. Except not up there and down here instead this time. Oh, it's not even been six minutes, I don't think. And we've got more than enough. The farm is definitely working better now. That's all we need right there. Now, like I said, we need a lot of stone. And basically in the future, I want to make a massive cave. So I'm going to start on that cave now, kind of. I'm going to make the entrance just here in the center of our area. So I've dug down a bit and we're going to place our beacon down. And the big moment. Look at all those achievements. Give me that haste too. Oh yeah, this is the good life. Cave clearing montage, baby. Well, I completely overestimated how much stone I'd need. This is all I need. Here's all the stone stuff we needed. Let's gather what else we need for this massive build. Yeah, material gathering with Joel, baby. Here we go again. Gathering some moss. Gathering some leaves from our chest system. Gathering some grass. Yes, I need more grass. And then gathering all some other materials, which I'm not going to list, but you're going to see on your screen right now. Instead, I'm going to talk to you about the thought process behind this build and how long it took to design. It took about six or seven hours to design in my creative world, and then I'm transporting it into this survival world. It's actually quicker to build it in survival afterwards, but the reason I design it in creative first in a different world is because it means I can make mistakes and I made a lot of mistakes building this thing. The original design looks completely different to what you're going to see. But anyway, I'll shut up and hand it back over to that stupid idiot who's called me. I know that didn't look like a lot, but it, it was. Look at all of this. Enough to make a glorious temple. Before we build it, I just wanted to have a chat with you guys. I'm sorry I've not really spoken to you in a while. Pff, rude. Barry, I love you. Muddy. I love you too, even though you don't think highly of me. All right. There was actually one more material I needed, 
And you'll never guess what it is. Yeah, it's iron blocks. But luckily, while we build it, we should hopefully get enough iron to make all the blocks we need. Probably going to have to do this in two parts because I'm going to have to take a breather midway through. You guys probably think I'm delaying because I don't want to get started on this. And you would be right. Let's stop doing that. And let's start building this absolutely massive temple. The Iron Temple is what I'm going to call this. When I was designing it in my creative world, I really wanted to add some gradients in as I feel like I don't use gradients that often and I wanted to practice them. And the law behind this temple is that it's an ancient temple that is all overgrown now. So we're using lots of moss and cracked bricks and making it look really ruined. <sighs> okay, had my breather. Back to work. Also, this point here is high enough so that the iron golems won't spawn, but on the walls on the outside, you'll notice some trap doors. That's just to stop spawning and to make sure the iron farm works perfectly. But we also added a few more layers, as you can see here. And this thing is huge. Look at the size of it. It's basically got the same footprint as our village over there. But it needs to be this big to cover up the iron farm, which, by the way, has been churning out iron. And I've actually used some as well on the build. But like I said, I want to give this place a sort of overgrown feel to it, as it is an ancient old iron temple. And at the moment, it's still looking a bit clean. Let's change that. So I had some leaves on and then got bone meal in the ground. However, I placed every flower that appeared with a lovely poppy to represent the iron golems. And we'll be using more poppies later as well. But do you know what this is missing? Apart from an interior. Is there isn't really a way other than the bits of iron I've used around to signify this is an iron farm. Where we murder iron golem after iron golem. But in my head I like to think the iron golems are actually just giving us the iron. And there's not just countless murder going on behind us. So let's honor our iron golem friends who sadly perish every second with some statues. And rather than make these out of iron, I thought I would fit it in with the theme and make them overgrown as well. And rather than just have them straight, I've put them in a pose where they're holding out the poppy here and looking nice and friendly. It almost makes me feel bad for murdering them. Almost. But there you go. The main structure is complete apart from the inside. Oops. Let me fix that quickly. There we go. That's much better. It's nothing special, but it doesn't need to be. It's just to collect our stuff. Now, you're probably thinking, Joel, you're going to put another wheat field around it because you just love wheat fields, you weirdo. Well, no, actually. Remember I said Poppy's going to come back into it? Well, here's where they come back into it. First, let's take them from our iron golems. And then getting planting. I'm going to hope this looks good. So I got planting poppies trying to fill up every single block. I also placed a bit of path. And then I also placed some more poppies in rain, in sun. Added some bushes on as well. But mainly just poppies. Lots of poppies being placed. Oh boy, that was a lot of poppies placed. Over 1,500 to be precise. But how does it look? Oh gosh, I just flew to the wheel. How does it look? Okay. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool. Although, you know what? If I had a better flowers resource pack, that looks so much better. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Look at that. It really just fills it out a little bit more. I love it. Gosh, don't you wish Minecraft flowers actually looked like this? The single poppy is so boring in comparison to this beautiful little thing. So you probably think I'm done. I've built the iron temple. I've started surrounding it with poppies. Yes, we ran out, obviously. This is a massive space. But let's give it a bit more depth. And my favorite way to do that is trees. So off I went to collect some different types of leaves and woods and just, you know, stuff you need to make trees, to be honest. What happened to my voice just then? That was weird. Anyway, we have all we need to build these trees. And we're not going to start by putting trees over here. Instead, we're going to start over here and also build a little bit of a path. And that's just to link up our base to this sort of area behind it. I thought it'd be quite fun. And oh, look, the time lapse is glitching through that. Maybe I should have checked that first. But you know what? I'm just going to leave it. Now I've got this funny little bit of commentary. But anyway, trees appearing. We've got loads of trees there we got some other trees here and now we have lots of trees oh yeah look at that trees poppies everything you'd ever want especially if you come over here right this is the good stuff walking down this lovely path here looking off and seeing all this and in the distance through this very shaded path by trees we get to the iron farm lovely jubbly and there's always more poppies to be placing gimme gimme i built the iron farm to get poppies not for iron nah i'm just kidding 
That's only kind of true. But each episode, I'll keep adding to this puppy field until it's complete. And then we can use the rest of the puppies for bone mill on more puppy fields. So to wrap up today, let's have a look at what this looks like with shaders. Oh, here they come. Wow, lovely, amazing. And then again, without shaders, because that's reality, isn't it? And the reason I built these trees, right, is so that we can build stuff behind here. And it's sort of like sheltered from the rest of our area. These trees make a sort of line, which is cool. Maybe I'll add a little bit more and have like a little forest here. And then we can build some more stuff over here in the future. Oh, so much opportunity. But I hope you liked my iron farm. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you another time. Good.